All right, hey guys, today we're gonna go over the P versus NP problem. And this is a problem that we still haven't been able to solve for in computer science. And if we were able to come up with a solution for this, it could change the way that we look at the world forever. It's a very important problem. It's one of the seven millennium problems. So if anyone were able to find the solution to this, they would get a million dollars. This is one of the first concepts or problems that I learned about that made me really interested in computer science as a study and not just coding. And I think you guys are all gonna find it super interesting. So let's just jump in. So the P versus NP problem asks whether every problem whose solution can be quickly verified for correctness can also be solved quickly. So what we mean by quickly, this term is being used loosely. By quickly, we mean in polynomial time. We have two sets of problems, which is why it's called P versus NP, or does P equal NP? So P problems are a set of problems that can be solved in polynomial time. And the NP problems are problems whose solutions can be verified for correctness in polynomial time. So we have here P problems, and then we also have NP problems. So we know for sure that P problems are part of NP because P problems by definition can be solved in polynomial time and NP problems are defined as problems whose solution can be verified for correctness in polynomial time. So because we can solve these problems in polynomial time, we also know that we can verify the solution for correctness in polynomial time. So when we're talking about polynomial time, this is in direct correlation with the input size. So Polynomial time means that for any given n input size, the algorithm efficiency is going to be at most O of n to the power of k, with k being any integer greater than 1. So when we're talking about polynomial time, we're just talking about it in relationship to the input size. So what we don't want is for an input size as n grows for our algorithm to take exponentially longer. We want it to be of polynomial time, not of exponential time. And if you're not clear on what that is, definitely go look that up before you finish this video because that's a big part of what this problem is all about. So to give you a little example of like, okay, what does this look like in practice? So a NP problem is something like this. This is an example of Wikipedia. It says a farmer wants to take 100 watermelons of different sizes to the market. She needs to pack the watermelons into boxes that can only hold 20 pounds each without breaking. Will 10 boxes be enough for the farmer? So this is considered an NP problem because this is not going to be able to be solved in polynomial time because this is something where you have to try all possible solutions to come up with the answer. As of now, right, to our understanding. If we could prove that P equals NP, that means that there is some algorithm out there that could do this in polynomial time. But for now... We know that you can't, but it's an NP problem because after we have a solution, if I bring you a solution, you can look at this and say, yes, this is true, this is correct, or no, this is not correct in polynomial time. So that means you can verify the solution quickly. And the reason why this problem is so interesting is because if we were able to prove that P equals NP, so like if we were able to say, this would mean that P problems and NP problems are one and the same, as of right now, we know them to be like this, right? P problems are a subset of NP problems, but NP is not a subset of P. But if we were able to prove this, it would have a lot of implications for our life. So think about all of our privacy and like all of these algorithms that protect us, our bank banking, privacy, security, password manager, all of these rely on encryption. Our modern day cryptography runs on the assumption that Factoring the product of two large primes is not P. So remember, P is problems that can be solved in polynomial time. So it's relying on the fact that, okay, it's not P, so we know for sure that no one's going to be able to crack this algorithm in polynomial time. They might be able to crack this algorithm in exponential time, but by then, tens of thousands of years would have passed, so it would not in practice be a threat to us. But if we were able to prove that P equals NP, then it would imply that there exists an algorithm that's efficient at factoring large prime numbers. And in that case, it would mean that there's an algorithm to crack any and all security measures that we have right now. So another example would be if somebody's trying to break into your house and you have one of those keypads that you use a keypad to unlock instead of a key so 
we're resting on the assumption that this is not a P problem, that someone could sit there and try all possible combinations and they would die before they were able to try all combinations. So even if someone tried to sit, sit there and crack your code, they would never be able to. But if we were able to prove that P equals NP, that means that there would be some algorithm out there that this person could use to crack your code in polynomial time, meaning if your input size is four or you know whatever your code is always going to be relatively small you're not going to have like a front key code that's a hundred digits it means that there is an algorithm out there that they can use that will run in polynomial time that will find the solution to open your door so you can see how this is such a huge deal and why this remains one of computer science's biggest questions that remains unanswered and i think it might be better if we keep it that way